Potter Blog site. It's October 17th, 6.30 p.m. Heavy storms, some tornado indications came through about an hour ago. Um, jet stream was, I think it's directly overhead now, at least the leading edge of it is. So we're going to take a sample off of a piece of sheet metal that we had out in the rain. Just going to wipe it down here. And you can see the background just off of the sheet metal even after we wiped it up it was three times over background which is interesting so let's see what we get off the sample itself there are five times of background ten times background 11, 13 times the background. Sixteen times the background. Eighteen times the background. Well, it looks like eighteen, so let's check a little different spot. Now what we've discovered doing uh, long-term tests <coughs> is the amount of short and half-life radioactivity is uh, directly proportional uh, to uh, the jet stream. And we believe this comes out of uh, natural radon coming out of the groundwater in Fukushima as it's bubbled up past the corium. And the other thing we've discovered is that um, the long half-life radiation, the stuff we can detect 10 days out that's barely detectable, usually two counts to four counts per minute max, as I think is the max we've caught, is uh, only detectable when the storms come from the jet stream. And the reason for that, we believe, is that the uh, long half-life half radiation is a particulate. They're volatile compounds. Uh, so they fall out of the jet stream, just like uh, soot or silt in a river. Uh, where the water runs fast, the, the silt stays suspended. Where the water goes slow, the silt falls out. Now the same doesn't hold true for the uh, for the uh, long half short half life radiation because it's gaseous.